Welcome, dear listeners, to another episode of our podcast. As we embark on this auditory voyage, we are about to delve into the depths of our planet, exploring the mysteries that lie beneath our feet. From the bustling life just below the surface to the fiery core at the heart of our world, our journey promises tales of wonder, discovery, and the relentless pursuit of knowledge. Imagine for a moment, standing at the edge of a mole tunnel, a mere 2.3 feet below the surface, marveling at the intricate network created by these tiny creatures. Feel the pulse of life as we encounter the deepest burrows made by animals, such as the Nile crocodiles, at almost 40 feet underground. Venture further, and we find ourselves amidst the remnants of human endeavor. The underground city of Beijing, a vast network of tunnels and rooms, lies 60 feet beneath the surface. Deeper still, we encounter the deepest hotel room in the world, nestled 508 feet underground in Sweden's Sala Silver Mine. But our journey doesn't end there. We'll delve into the mysteries of our planet's structure, from the Echo Caves near Origstad, with the deepest roots known to people, reaching down 400 feet to the fiery core of our planet, over 2,750 miles deep. Listeners, as we set forth on this odyssey, we invite you to join us in celebrating the marvels of our planet, the secrets it holds, and the eternal quest for understanding. This is not just a journey through the layers of the Earth. It's an exploration of the wonders that lie beneath our feet, of our shared curiosity, and of the stories that bind us to our world. So, fasten your seatbelts, open your minds, and let your imagination soar as we embark on this grand adventure, retracing the footsteps of ancient civilizations marveling at the wonders of our world and cherishing the tales that have shaped our collective consciousness. Welcome to our journey to the depths of our planet. As we stand on this vast expanse of Earth, have you ever paused to wonder what lies just below the surface? Let's dive in. Imagine for a moment the soft, cool grass beneath your feet. Now let's peel back that layer, like the page of a book, revealing the stories written in the soil below just a couple of feet down, and we're already in a bustling metropolis of nature. Mole tunnels crisscross in intricate patterns, a testament to the tireless work of these small creatures. Did you know that a single mole can dig a tunnel longer than 65 feet in just one day? It's a feat of nature that's both astounding and humbling. But it's not just the moles that are busy at work. Rabbits, those furry little creatures we adore, are also architects of the underground. They're warrens, a maze of interconnected burrows provide shelter, safety, and a place to raise their young. It's a world of soft whispers, gentle thuds, and the muted hustle and bustle of tiny feet. And then, there's the earthworm. Often overlooked, these wriggly beings play a pivotal role in our ecosystem. Some of the deep burrowing types, known as night crawlers, can grow impressively large and live up to 10 feet below the surface. They are the unsung heroes, tilling the soil, making it fertile, and ensuring that life above continues to thrive. Beneath us, in the first 10 feet of our Earth, is a microcosm of life, a dance of nature that's been ongoing for millennia. As we continue our descent into the depths of our Earth, we find ourselves at a layer steeped in history, emotion, and the very essence of humanity. The ground beneath us holds more than just the roots of trees and the burrows of animals. It cradles stories, memories, and the echoes of lives once lived. Centuries ago, as the world grappled with the relentless grip of the plague, a mandate was set forth in England. The mayor of London in 1665 decreed that the departed be laid to rest six feet under. This depth, it was believed, would shield the living from the contagion that had claimed so many. But beyond the practicality of this decision lay a deeper, more profound sentiment. Six feet became not just a measure of depth, but a symbol of finality, of letting go, and of the hope that the souls would find peace in the embrace of the earth. The phrase six feet under has since become etched in our collective consciousness, a poetic reminder of the fragility of life and the eternal embrace of the earth. But as we stand at this depth, we're not just standing on soil, we're standing on stories. Each grain of dirt, each pebble, has witnessed the silent tears of farewells, the hushed prayers of grieving hearts, and the solemn promises to never forget. In this sacred space, we also find tales from lands far and wide, 
from the majestic pyramids of Egypt, where pharaohs were entombed with treasures and artifacts, to the serene burial grounds of ancient civilizations, where rituals and traditions guided souls to the afterlife. These historical burials are more than just resting places. They are time capsules, preserving the beliefs, hopes, and dreams of generations gone by. Now, let's delve deeper into the heart of Egypt, to the hallowed chambers of Pharaoh Tutankhamun's tomb. The golden sands of Egypt have borne witness to countless dynasties, to the rise and fall of great pharaohs, and to stories of gods and mortals. But hidden beneath these sands, for millennia, lay a secret that would illuminate the world with its splendor. The tomb of the young pharaoh Tutankhamun, a boy king who ascended to the throne at a tender age, and whose reign, though brief, left an indelible mark on history. In 1922, as the world stood on the brink of modernity, a discovery was made that would bridge the chasm between the ancient and the present. Archaeologist Howard Carter, with passion burning in his eyes and hope in his heart, unveiled a doorway to the past. As the seals of the tomb were broken and the chambers revealed, the world held its collective breath. What lay within was not just treasures of gold and precious stones, but the very essence of a civilization that had flourished by the Nile. The artifacts, meticulously placed to accompany the young king in the afterlife, whispered tales of rituals, beliefs, and a society that revered both life and death. The golden death mask of Tutankhamun, with its serene countenance and regal adornments, became an emblem of eternal beauty and the transcendence of time. It was a poignant reminder of a life cut short, yet immortalized in the annals of history. But beyond the treasures and the artifacts, the tomb held emotions. The reverence with which the young pharaoh was laid to rest, the hopes that he would find peace and solace in the embrace of the gods, and the desire to preserve his legacy for eternity. Each chamber, each corridor, echoed with the silent prayers of priests, the gentle lullabies sung by mourning queens, and the dreams of a kingdom that believed in the power of the afterlife. Going further, let's learn about what is capable of finding such wrecks of ancient civilizations and valuable things. We delve into the fascinating world of metal detectors and the timeless allure of hidden treasures. Imagine for a moment a vast expanse of land, seemingly ordinary, yet pulsating with stories buried deep within its bosom. Each grain of soil, each blade of grass, is a silent guardian of secrets that have been lost to time. But amidst the quiet, there's a song, a faint hum, a call to those who seek the treasures of yesteryears. And in this symphony, the metal detector emerges as the modern-day wand, a bridge between the known and the unknown. The gentle beep of a metal detector is not just a signal, it's a heartbeat, a promise of discovery. To the treasure hunter, it's the sweetest melody, heralding the possibility of unearthing relics of bygone eras, artifacts that carry with them tales of love, war, triumph, and loss. Whether it's a centuries-old coin, a forgotten piece of jewelry, or a relic from a civilization long gone, each find is a tangible connection to our shared history. But it's not just about the objects, it's about the emotions they evoke. The thrill of discovery, the palpable excitement as the earth gives way to reveal a hidden treasure, is an experience that transcends time. It's a dance of joy, a celebration of the past, and a testament to the enduring spirit of curiosity. Each beep of the metal detector is a call to adventure, a beckoning to journey deeper into the annals of history and to touch the very fabric of time. Deepening further, we delve into the deep root world of rainforest plants. Picture, if you will, the verdant expanse of a tropical rainforest. The air is thick with the scent of fresh foliage, the symphony of birds and insects fills the air, and the vibrant tapestry of green stretches as far as the eye can see. But this visual spectacle is just half the story. For beneath the forest floor lies a world equally mesmerizing, a world of roots that delve deep, seeking nourishment, connection, and life. These roots, some slender and delicate, others thick and robust, weave intricate patterns beneath the soil. They are the silent lifelines of the towering trees above, drawing sustenance from the earth, anchoring giants, and connecting life in an intricate web of interdependence. Some tropical trees send their roots as deep as 23 feet or more, a testament to their resilience, tenacity, 
and the profound depths they reach to sustain life. But why such depth, you might wonder? These roots, in their wisdom, are nature's reservoirs. In the tropical regions, where the dance of wet and dry seasons plays out year after year, these deep roots store precious water, ensuring that even in the harshest of dry spells, life above continues to flourish. They are the silent guardians, ensuring that the vibrant cacophony of the rainforest never fades. Listeners, as we continue our odyssey into the hidden realms of our world, we find ourselves on the cobbled streets of London, a city steeped in history, mystery, and countless tales. But today, we delve into a story that is both enigmatic and profoundly human. Today, we unravel the tale of William Little, better known as the Mole Man of London. Imagine, if you will, the bustling metropolis of London, the iconic skyline, the River Thames flowing with timeless grace, and the harmonious blend of the ancient and the modern. But beneath this vibrant cityscape, in the quiet borough of Hackney, a man embarked on a journey of passion, obsession, and unparalleled determination. William Little, an ordinary man with an extraordinary dream, began to dig. And dig he did for over four decades. With each shovel of earth, with each inch he delved deeper, William was not just excavating the soil. He was carving out a world of his own, a subterranean realm that defied convention and logic. His home became a labyrinth, a maze of tunnels and caverns that stretched an astonishing 65 feet away from the house and reached depths of 26 feet. But why? What drove this man to burrow so deep, to dedicate so much of his life to this singular pursuit? The Mole Man's tunnels were more than just physical passages. They were a testament to the human spirit's unyielding desire to explore, to create, and to transcend boundaries. They spoke of a man's quest for meaning, for a space uniquely his own, and perhaps a search for something deeper, something ineffable. William's tunnels, while a marvel, also brought challenges, concerns for safety, and a myriad of questions from the community and authorities. His labyrinthine world, while a sanctuary for him, became a puzzle for many. We've learned what could be found at six feet and at 20 feet. Now let's go further. We delve into the world of the mighty Nile crocodiles and the enigmatic underground city of Beijing. First, let us transport ourselves to the sun-drenched banks of the Nile, the lifeblood of Egypt. Here, amidst the reeds and the gentle ebb and flow of the river, lurks a creature as ancient as the pyramids, a living testament to nature's primal force, the Nile crocodile. These magnificent beings with their armored scales and piercing eyes are not just apex predators, they are guardians of a legacy that spans millions of years. But what's truly astounding is not their prowess on land or in water, but the depths they reach beneath the earth. These crocodiles, in their maternal wisdom, dig some of the deepest burrows known in the animal kingdom. Almost 40 feet down, they create sanctuaries for their eggs, ensuring the next generation is shielded from the scorching sun and potential predators. In the cool, dark embrace of these burrows, life begins, guarded by the fierce love of the Nile's ancient sentinels. Yet, as we marvel at nature's wonders, our journey takes us thousands of miles east to the heart of Beijing. Beneath the bustling streets, the hum of markets, and the shadow of ancient temples lies a world few know exists. The underground city of Beijing, a sprawling labyrinth of tunnels and chambers, stands as a monument to human resilience, foresight, and the indomitable spirit to survive. Conceived during the Cold War era, this subterranean city was designed as a refuge, a sanctuary against potential threats. Stretching over 85 square kilometers, it's a city beneath a city, complete with schools, hospitals, and theaters. It is these depths where the jungle roots run and where crocodiles hide their eggs that are accessible to us as ordinary people. But the world is much bigger and deeper than it seems. So let's talk about how our planet Earth is arranged closer to its center. Imagine, if you will, our Earth not as a solid, unyielding sphere, but as a living, breathing entity composed of layers, each with its own story, its own rhythm, and its own secrets. From the crust we walk upon to the molten core that pulses at its center, each layer is a chapter in the grand saga of our planet's history. The outermost layer, the crust, is where our stories, civilizations, and memories are etched. But beneath it lies the mantle, 
a vast expanse of solid rock, flowing and shifting in slow, graceful movements. It's here, in this realm of heat and pressure, that the Earth's memories are forged, transformed, and molded over eons. Deeper still, we encounter the outer core, a sea of molten metal, churning and swirling in a dance as ancient as time itself. And at the very heart of our planet, the inner core stands resolute, a solid sphere of iron and nickel, bearing witness to the birth of our world and guarding its most ancient secrets. Yet, as these layers shift and interact, they sometimes speak. And when they do, the Earth trembles. Earthquakes, those sudden jarring tremors, are not just natural phenomena. They are the Earth's whispers, sometimes gentle, sometimes fierce, reminding us of the dynamic world beneath our feet. Each quake is a note in the symphony of the spheres, a song of movement, change, and the eternal dance of creation and destruction. Now let's continue our dive into the molten depths of the Earth's outer core, into the world of fire and metal, motion and magnetism. Imagine, if you will, a journey to the center of the Earth. As we pass through the mantle's rocky expanse, we encounter a boundary, a gateway to a world that defies our everyday understanding. Here, beneath miles of rock, lies the outer core, a sea of super-hot liquid metal, churning and swirling in a dance as ancient as the Earth itself. This molten sea, primarily composed of iron and nickel, is not just a physical layer, it's the heartbeat of our planet. With each ebb and flow, with each swirl and churn, it generates the Earth's magnetic field, an invisible shield that protects us from the sun's harmful solar winds. It's a silent guardian, a fiery protector, ensuring that life above can thrive and flourish. But the outer core is more than just a protective layer. It's a testament to the dynamic, ever-evolving nature of our planet. It's a reminder of the immense heat and pressure that exist beneath our feet, of the forces that shape our world, and of the delicate balance that sustains life. In its fiery depths, we find a reflection of our own resilience, our ability to withstand pressure, and our capacity to adapt and evolve. So what's going on inside the very core of the Earth? Beyond the swirling, molten expanse of the outer core, there lies a sanctuary, a bastion of solidity amidst the fiery depths. This is the inner core, a sphere of iron and nickel which, against all odds, stands resolute and solid, even under the immense pressures and temperatures that rival those on the surface of the sun. It is the anchor, the bedrock, the very soul of our world. But the inner core is not just a physical entity, it's a testament to the enduring spirit of our planet. In its unyielding solidity, we find a reflection of the Earth's resilience, its tenacity, and its age-old journey through time and space. This core, which has witnessed the birth of continents, the formation of mountains, and the ebb and flow of oceans, holds the memories of our world, the echoes of its creation, and the promise of its future. We talked briefly about the depth to where we could reach on our own and the inner workings of our land. Let us now talk about the structures and buildings that have been made inside the Earth by other people. From the sprawling underground cities to the intricate labyrinths of mines, these structures are monuments to our species' indomitable spirit. The Mponeng gold mine in South Africa, for instance, plunges a staggering 2.5 miles beneath the Earth's surface. Here, in the heart of the planet, humans have sought the glint of gold, a symbol of wealth and power. But beyond the allure of precious metals, this mine tells a story of perseverance, of the lengths we go to harness the treasures of our world, and of the challenges and triumphs that mark such endeavors. Yet, our ambitions don't stop at mines. Beneath the bustling streets of cities like Montreal and Moscow lie vast subterranean networks, metro systems that pulse with life, connecting people, stories, and destinies. These tunnels, carved deep into the earth, are not just pathways, they are arteries of civilization, testaments to our ability to reshape the world to our will. And then there are the underground bunkers, repositories of secrets, and sometimes hopes for survival against calamities. These structures, often hidden from view, remind us of our vulnerabilities, but also our foresight, our capacity to plan, prepare, and protect. But we don't stop there. We can remember the most amazing structures that were created far before us in modern technology. Let's talk about lost cities and mysterious places that we managed to find. To begin, let us descend into the very bowels of the earth, into a realm of darkness and wonder, 
to uncover the secrets of the daring Kuyu underground city. Imagine for a moment the bustling life of an ancient town, the laughter of children, the hum of daily chores, the rhythmic cadence of artisans at work. Now, transport that entire town deep beneath the earth into a subterranean labyrinth carved meticulously by human hands. This is not the setting of a mythical tale, but the very real and awe-inspiring Derinkuyu. Nestled in the heart of Turkey, in the province of Nevsehir, this underground marvel was stumbled upon quite by accident. In 1963, a local man, while renovating his home, knocked down a wall, only to unveil a doorway to the past. A mysterious room led to a tunnel, and the tunnel seemed to beckon him deeper into the earth. What he had discovered was not just a room, but an entire city hidden beneath the surface. Spanning eight levels deep, Derinkuyu is a testament to ancient engineering and the indomitable human spirit. It is believed that this subterranean refuge could shelter up to 20,000 souls, along with their livestock and food supplies. But what drives a civilization to carve out such a massive sanctuary underground? Was it the fear of invaders, the harshness of the elements, or perhaps a deeper spiritual calling? The intricate network of tunnels, chambers, and ventilation shafts speaks of a community prepared for prolonged periods of seclusion. Massive rolling stone doors could seal off passages, ensuring safety from potential threats. Narrow passageways ensured that any invaders would be forced to enter one by one, making defense easier. But beyond its strategic design, Derinkuyu whispers tales of a community that thrived in unity. Schools, chapels, and communal spaces hint at a society that valued education, faith, and togetherness, even in the face of adversity. But this city isn't the only such place. Let us journey to the heart of the Yucatan Peninsula, where the dense tropical forests of southern Mexico cradle the remnants of a once mighty city, the ancient city of Calakmul. Picture, if you will, a world where the verdant canopy stretches as far as the eye can see, where the calls of exotic birds meld with the whispers of the wind. Hidden within this emerald expanse, rising majestically from the forest floor, are the towering temple pyramids and structures of Calakmul. These stone edifices, now partially reclaimed by nature, were once the heart of a thriving metropolis, a beacon of power and culture in the realm of the Maya. Calakmul, often referred to as the Kingdom of the Snake, was not just any city. At its zenith, it was home to over 50,000 souls, making it one of the superpowers of ancient Mesoamerica. Its influence stretched far and wide, with its rulers often entangled in intricate political and military alliances, rivalries, and wars, particularly with the neighboring city-state of Tikal. But beyond the battles and politics, Kalakmul was a hub of art, spirituality, and knowledge. Its stelae, intricately carved stone slabs, narrate stories of its rulers, their divine lineage, and their exploits. The city's reservoirs, an engineering marvel, ensured that its inhabitants had access to fresh water even during the driest periods. And its temples, reaching for the skies, served as both spiritual centers and astronomical observatories, bearing witness to the Maya's deep connection with the cosmos. Yet what truly sets Kalakmul apart is its symbiotic relationship with nature. Unlike many ancient cities, Kalakmul's layout seems to embrace the forest, with many of its structures built in harmony with the natural landscape. This delicate balance between man and nature offers a glimpse into the Maya's profound respect for the environment and their understanding of their place within it. But such cities are actually not rare, and something that almost no one knows about. For example, you must have heard about the city of Troy at least once. City on the shores of ancient Anatolia, where the echoes of heroes, gods, and epic battles reverberate. The mythical city of Troy. Nestled on the edge of modern-day Turkey, near the Dardanelles Strait, the ruins of Troy stand as a testament to a city that has captured the imagination of poets, scholars, and dreamers for millennia. Its very name conjures images of valiant warriors, forbidden love, and the iconic wooden horse that sealed its fate. For many, Troy is synonymous with Homer's Iliad, an epic poem that paints a vivid tapestry of honor, passion, and the tragic cost of pride. The tale of the Trojan War, where Greek heroes like Achilles, Hector, and Odysseus clashed amidst the backdrop of divine intervention, has been passed down through generations, becoming an integral part of our cultural heritage. Yet beyond the verses of the Iliad, 
the city of Troy was more than just a backdrop for legendary battles. Recent archaeological excavations have revealed layers upon layers of ancient settlements, suggesting that Troy was not just a singular city, but a series of cities built atop one another. Each layer tells a story of a different era, a different civilization, and a different chapter in the long saga of human endeavor. The strategic location of Troy, bridging Europe and Asia, made it a coveted prize for many ancient powers. Its walls, which once echoed with the cries of battle, also bore witness to thriving trade, cultural exchanges, and the ebb and flow of empires. The treasures unearthed from its soil, from intricate jewelry to ornate pottery, speak of a city that was as prosperous as it was influential. Learning about such ancient places makes you want to see everything with your own eyes, such as this place, the mesmerizing Thonis Heracleion. Listeners, as we chart the vast expanse of human history, there are tales that seem to emerge from the very realms of fantasy, stories that blur the lines between reality and legend. Today, let us embark on a voyage not across lands but through the depths of the Mediterranean to uncover the secrets of a city lost to time and tide, the mesmerizing Thonis Heracleion. Imagine, if you will, a city of unparalleled splendor, where grand temples and statues of gold stood proudly, where bustling marketplaces echoed with the languages of distant lands, and where majestic ships sailed in and out, carrying tales from the farthest corners of the ancient world. This was Thonis Heracleion, a jewel of the Nile Delta and a beacon of civilization in its heyday. For centuries, Thonis Heracleion was more than just a city. It was a gateway, a bridge between the mighty pharaohs of Egypt and the burgeoning empires of the Mediterranean. Its strategic location made it a hub of trade, diplomacy, and cultural exchange. Yet what truly set it apart was its aura of mystique, often alluded to in ancient texts, but eluding tangible discovery. That was until the turn of the 21st century, when submerged four miles off the coast of Alexandria, the remnants of this once great city were unveiled. The discovery was nothing short of magical. Here, beneath the azure waters, lay a city frozen in time. Grand statues of gods and pharaohs, inscriptions detailing rituals and decrees, and artifacts of daily life painted a vivid picture of a civilization in its prime. But what led to the demise of such a grand city? Theories suggest that a combination of rising sea levels, earthquakes, and soil liquefaction may have caused Thonis Heracleion to sink into the depths, taking with it centuries of history and legacy. Yet even in its submerged state, the city continues to captivate. Its ruins, now home to marine life, are a poignant reminder of the impermanence of human endeavor and the eternal dance of man, nature, and time. What about those places that were very popular and powerful in the past, even likely more so than the city of Troy? Nestled in the present-day state of Gujarat, Lothal was once a thriving port city of the Harappan civilization, one of the world's oldest urban cultures. As you close your eyes, imagine a bustling cityscape where streets are laid out in a grid, where homes are equipped with advanced drainage systems, and where a sophisticated dockyard witnesses the ebb and flow of ships laden with goods. Lothal, which translates to the city of the dead, was anything but. It was a city teeming with life, innovation, and ambition. Its dock, believed to be the world's oldest, is a marvel of ancient engineering. This meticulously constructed structure allowed ships to sail in from distant lands, making Lothal a focal point of trade in the ancient world. But Lothal's significance extends beyond its architectural prowess. The city was a melting pot of ideas and cultures. Its bead-making factories produced intricate ornaments that found their way to distant lands, showcasing the craftsmanship of its artisans. The discovery of seals and weights hints at a structured system of trade and commerce, while the presence of a ruler's residence suggests a form of governance and hierarchy. Yet, amidst the bricks and artifacts, what truly captures the essence of Lothal is its spirit of inquiry. The city was home to astronomers who studied the stars, traders who charted new routes, and everyday citizens who, in their own way, contributed to the tapestry of Harappan life. Listeners, as we conclude this enlightening voyage, we find ourselves standing at the crossroads of wonder and knowledge. We've journeyed from the intricate tunnels crafted by moles just beneath our feet to the awe-inspiring depths of the Earth's core. 
we've marveled at the legacies of ancient civilizations, like the grandeur of Pharaoh Tutankhamun's tomb, and stood in awe of modern achievements, such as the vast underground network of Beijing's subterranean city. We've ventured into the heart of nature, witnessing the resilience of the Nile crocodiles and the adaptability of tropical forest plants, each carving their niche deep within the earth. We've also encountered the indomitable human spirit, exemplified by individuals like William Little of Hackney, the Mole Man, who dedicated decades to crafting an underground labyrinth beneath his home. Our journey has been a testament to the boundless curiosity of humankind and the myriad mysteries our planet holds. From the tales of ancient cities like Lothal and Troy to the isolated beauty of the Kerguelen Islands, we've traversed a vast tapestry of stories that bind us to our world and to each other. As we wrap up this expedition, let's take a moment to reflect on the lessons we've gleaned and the wonders we've encountered. The Earth, in all its depth and diversity, is a constant reminder of the intricate dance of life, evolution, and discovery. Each layer we've explored, each story we've unearthed, serves as a beacon, guiding us towards a deeper understanding of our planet and ourselves. Thank you for joining us on this grand adventure. As we continue our quest for knowledge, let's carry with us the tales of our journey, cherishing the insights they offer and the endless allure of the world beneath our feet. Until our next expedition, keep exploring, keep wondering, and always remember, the journey is as significant as the destination. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.